Hi everyone, it's me, Tim. Today I want to talk about AI. There's been a lot of people asking me my opinion on the rise of artificial intelligence in tools that are being used more and more frequently in game development and lots of other things. These are things like the LLMs like Chatbot or ChatGPT, which are text-based, or the art generators like Dolly or Stable Diffusion. First off, let me say, while I do have a graduate degree in AI, it is from the 90s. So I am 30 years behind. Actually, wow, no, it's an 89. I am 34 years behind this stuff, but we had neural nets back then. I think a big thing about these new LLMs is just their sheer size. Uh, and the training sets are better. Yes, a lot of stuff is advanced. But given their nature, I kind of view them in the same light I viewed neural nets back then, which are they are great tools. One issue with neural nets is you never know how they're coming up with their answer. You just give it input and it gives you an output. Tracing through the neural network connections, especially ones as large as the current ones, isn't humanly possible. So I don't foresee humans getting replaced that by them. I don't think they should be replaced by them. In fact, what I think these AI tools are great for is what my old producer, Eric DeMille, used to call a force multiplier. I think these would be great to use in games to create more art, let one person make more art or more detailed art or make early concept art before you really have any clear idea what you want. I still think those things should be done by humans who understand what you're trying to do rather than LLMs that have just been trained in areas adjacent to what you want to do. Because if you do that, if you, if you go the AI route, I don't think you're going to get originality. You're just going to get variations on whatever themes you fed them. <clears throat> but still, I can see in the game industry how these tools would be used. So let me walk through how I think I'd use them. For art, as I mentioned, I think concept art is a great way of using this, especially when you're first starting to discuss a game and you're like, well, what if we did this art deco? What if we did this um, like uh, sci-fi novel covers from the 50s? What if we did this as the, the style of Atari VCS game covers. You know the one, those painterly ones I'm talking about. Those are really cool. I could also see the the art ones being used in game art. Now 3D, now that they have 3D models uh, that can be generated by AI, I can see the initial ones being created by AI or after a human has done a very detailed one, using AI to add more details or to make variations, because you always want variations. You make up some leather armor and you want, I need, every artist knows what I'm talking about when, when someone tells them, okay, that's a great leather armor. Can you make me 10 more variations? Doing it any other way than just modifying the color is, I'm, it's got to be mind numbing. That's where the tool would be great for. I see this, a similar thing for narrative designers. Um, I see procedural narrative. Similar to what I tried to do in Arcanum, and I have a video on that, but much more powerful. I don't know if you'd want to use this for your main characters, but one problem that large RPGs have is you have hundreds, if not thousands, of side NPCs. And the idea of wasting a human's time on those NPCs when all they really ever say is, what do you want to buy? Or what are you doing in my house? Let the AI do that. Similarly, I see doing procedural levels and procedural maps for things like dungeons and caves. I mean, imagine every game being able to be like Skyrim with all the hundreds of locations you can explore, but being made by smaller teams. I think that's really exciting. Training an AI on making small explorable spaces like that, especially instances, is doable and suddenly you can have small indie teams make larger games. And I think that's really cool. I think that's a great way this tool could be used. 
Similarly, um, and this is a narrative thing again, but I think side quests could be generated. The, the Radiant Quest AI on in um, a lot of Bethesda games, I think that could be greatly expanded upon. I mean, imagine side quests that were being developed where there's just a type of quest, like whether it's a, I need this item, or I need you to take care of these bad guys, or I need you to escort this, although people don't like escort, or I need you to um, take this somewhere, take this item somewhere. These could all be generated by the AI for something appropriate to your level and your build and everything associated with it. The map you go to, the dialogue of the creatures there, that could all be generated by AI. And I think if they were given sufficient guidelines from people, I think it could be really fun. I wouldn't want the whole game made that way, but I certainly see a lot of the extra material being made that way. Code is an interesting question. I used to think, okay, this isn't gonna happen to programmers, but I have seen some really cool AI code generation, mostly helping a human. Having a human say, hey, I need you to, uh, I need some code right now to sort this list, or I need you to find the value in, in this thing that's closest to this. How would you recommend I store this data so I can be doing that search really quickly. And I've seen AI generate, well, I'll put it in a heap. Those are really cool things. And I think that's something that could be explored. Note the, the theme in all this is how can game development be made where we make bigger games, more expansive games, more reactive games, more visually detailed games, richer games with people. I'm basically thinking of ways this AI could be used to reduce the development time, reduce bugs, reduce the team size needed, not so that you can hire fewer people, you're still gonna want big teams for certain games, but so that indies can make more games and smaller devs can make more games that currently require a Blizzard or a Bungie or an Epic. So one thing that I was thinking of to, that I've been thinking of a lot lately is because I keep all my music on online and I use this device, which I can't name or it will activate. I play music all the time, all throughout the day, except when I'm filming these. I'm usually listening to music. I'm listening to music when I'm cooking. I'm listening to music when I'm coding. I listen to music in a car. Music streaming services across the board are pretty bad. I, I really want a music service that I can upload my music to. Like I've mentioned before, I've got a lot of ambient music. I own it on CDs. I've ripped it. I like to listen to it. I wish I could listen to it anywhere. So I prefer music streaming services that let me upload music, which really restricts the music services I can listen to. Oddly, even though I've been using this one for years, its AI hasn't figured out my preferences. I don't like live songs. I don't like remastered songs. I like the original one that I'm used to. I don't like censored songs. I'm not 10. You don't need to take curse words out of my songs. Oddly, when I ask this thing just play music, it often starts with one of 10 to 15 songs all the time. One time it kept doing a song that I told it I hated. It was Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer, and I have no idea why I thought I wanted to hear that song over and over and over. It was very difficult to get it to stop doing that. I don't own it. I never told it I liked it. So the, why when I just told it to play music, that song appeared in the first dozen, I have no idea. But one thing I've always wanted it to do is take context into account. Look at, look at where I'm lo located, which it can tell by what of these home devices pick up my voice. Is it the one in my office? Is it the one in the bathroom? Is it the one in the living room? Is it, am I in my car? Which you can tell from location services. If I'm not at home, I'm in my car. So I wish it would take into account time of day, day of week, and location. I don't wanna hear ambient music when I'm driving my car. I don't wanna hear hard rock when I'm at my desk. These are things that I feel like it could do, but it doesn't do. And this is where some of these new AIs, I think, would do a great job at 
improving streaming services and their guess of what people want to listen to music. I still want new music given to me, but I would think from the years of data you have of music I've asked for or specifically said I liked, that you could figure out what kind of music I like. But I've yet to discover a streaming service that has a really good grasp of the music I like or can serve me up new music. I had to discover Witch House on my own. Once I started telling it to play specific Witch House songs, then I learned a lot more new songs, but I had to do that. I wish for once it would, it would throw something at me and have me go, I've never heard this genre before in my life, and I've yet to have that happen. So beyond game development, I'm really excited about all this new AI and what it could be used for. Yes, there's a lot of bad things it could be used for. The worst thing I'm worried about is either misinformation, especially political misinformation, or just making it another channel for advertising. Because in the history of human beings, anytime we develop a form of communication, whether it's talking, writing, TV, radio, internet, whatever, we always eventually just jam it full of advertisements. So I'm sure this is going to happen, but I don't think that's a fault of AI. I just think that's how humans are. Anyway, I'm remaining cautiously, cautiously optimistic about this AI, and I hope it really does come through. Anyway, that's my ideas on AI and game dev and beyond.